Yeah, I lost my mother. The last time I saw my mother was through the rear view mirror. I never got to say goodbye. I never got to pray over my mother. I never got to grieve my mother. My brother also died when I was in prison. I had to cry in Guantanamo Bay alone. I had to grieve alone. You were held in Guantanamo for 14 years without charge, during which you say you were repeatedly tortured, deprived of sleep, uh, and sexually uh, assaulted. Now, if I take it to the beginning, I mean, you actually immigrated to Canada to, to escape U.S. scrutiny uh, at the time, which was happening because of several factors. That includes your brief time in, in Afghanistan, um, a family member's connection to uh, Osama bin Laden. Yet you're suing the Canadian government today for $30 million because you allege Canadian authorities played a central role uh, that led to your detention. So people may wonder why you only want to see the Canadian government be held accountable and not also the American government. Uh, without Canadian government, I would never have been kidnapped. Without the Canadian government, I would never have been selected for the torture program because the, uh, of the evidence uh, or phone conversation that the Canadian government gathered while I was in Canada uh, trying to enjoy the freedom and the protection that the Canadian constitution offered me. But instead of the protection I was seeking, I was literally thrown under the bus and the, the Canadian government swallowed uh, all the erroneous intelligence that the American people, uh, the American uh, agencies passed on to them, you know, which was as we Today, no erroneous evidence, me being involved in the horrific uh, attempt to kill innocent people in the U.S., this uh, infamous Millennium Plot. You were questioned by Canadian authorities over your relation to the so-called Millennium Bomber, who the only connection was, according to you, was that he prayed at the same Montreal mosque as you. And that was it. You had Absolutely. Never met him. And, uh, and we did not pray at the same time in the mosque. So I, when I arrived to Canada, he was already gone. He was not in Canada anymore. The other thing also that, you know, enforced the suspicion that at that time, I, when I arrived to Canada, the mosque asked me to, uh, to uh, lead the prayer during Ramadan. They asked me and I volunteered, you know, but this fact was used against me later on. My mistake was that I did not call a lawyer you know, I should have gone to a lawyer. I should have faced them and said, you cannot do this to me. I didn't do anything. But, you know, growing up in a military dictatorship, I was afraid of the police. As to the part of your question, you're right. Why don't we go to the, the bad guy? I mean, Canadian, of course, Canadian offered the intelligence and the infamous phone call, Tea and Sugar. And Tea, tea and Sugar, uh, Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> this is just to, just to clarify. This is so you say you were speaking to a friend about wanting tea and sugar, and you allege that the I guess Canadian intelligence used this conversation as you using tea and sugar as code for something else, something nefarious. Yes, absolutely. So it was uh, Raouf. His name was Raouf, and uh, and he said. Can I come over for a cup of tea? I said, yes, please uh, get more tea and sugar on the way. And then they said, because he was uh, very known for some reason to the authorities, they said, ah, those people are planning. But I was only planning to make tea. So this conversation, conversation was intercepted illegally, you know. And then it was given to American, knowing and given to Jordan and knowing that I was running the risk of being tortured. They did give them this information and I was tortured. So, and my lawyer said, so the only way for Canadian to answer us is if we hit them with a, uh, with a lawsuit. And I was like, okay, because, you know, we just, I just wanted an apology and I want them to give me back my paper that they uh, took away. 
you know, because I need a life because my country would give me a passport. I, I never wanted to sue anyone because I chose forgiveness. And this is a pattern actually in, in Canada that people are targeted because of their religion, you know, of their affiliation. You believe you were targeted for being a Muslim? Absolutely. I was targeted because I went to the mosque. I was targeted because I was an imam of a, of a mosque. And this needs to stop because people from the Middle East, they come to Canada for protection. When you say you want to see the Canadian government held accountable, is that only referring to compensation or is there something more you'd like to see happen? I want Canada to tell the world this was a mistake. You know, I want them just like Holland did. They said this was atrocious what was done. This guy is a victim. I want to clear my name. This is very important to me. And I want to be able to go to Canada freely and meet my readers and meet my supporters and do my talk in all the cities in Canada because I love Canadian people. And we need to stop, you know, these exceptions that Middle Eastern people and that those people are not deserving of human rights. And we can pass intelligence about them to dictatorial regime. We know they will torture them. This need to stop and this need to be there in the open and make it uh, com- expressly against the law to pass any information about Canadian people or Canadian residents to foreign government, especially dictatorial government. I have said repeatedly that I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through on that. Moving on to the United States. In 2008, Barack Obama pledged to close Guantanamo Bay. It's 2022 and it's still open. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Given that the Obama administration actually blocked your release after a a U.S. judge ordered your release in 2010. You know, this is a very, very bad thing. Why it is bad? When we say... When we talk about Guantanamo Bay, because it's so painful, because America is the leader of the free world, Guantanamo Bay opens the uh, door wide of the floodgate for dictators to say now, if they can brand anyone with terrorism, they destroy their life. And America cannot, with straight face, tell countries like China and Russia, you cannot uh, violate human rights. Because they just come back and say, you violate human rights. You know, you, we can kill people we can, because they're terrorists. Just like you said, you said when you designate someone terrorist, you can kill them, including Obama too. He killed people just because he designated them terrorists. You know. My last question, you published a memoir on your detainment that was adapted into a Hollywood film last year. I'm curious to know, you've given interviews, you've given talks. What has it been like sharing your story in such a public way with the world? It's very painful. And it was very challenging because I was intimidated. But I'm not going to shut up because I know it's, it's for me too late because I, I, I spent my young years in, uh, in prison. But I don't want any other person from my region to go through the same. I want them to speak out. I want them to say, this is my right. <laughs> this is my right to speak out. This is my right to practice freedom of speech and to ask for human rights and democracy. It's painful to recall all of this, but this is not a job. This is a mission. And I'm dedicating my life to dignity and human rights, especially in my region. Mm-hmm.